Hello, here's the answer key for the 7.4 to 7.6 quiz. All right, so there's 10 multiple choice questions on this one. So question one, uh, we have this balanced equation right here. Uh, we have COCl2 decomposes according to the equation above. So we have pure COCl2 is injected into a rigid previously evacuated flask at 690 Kelvin. The pressure in the flask is initially one atmosphere. So after the reaction reaches equilibrium at 690 Kelvin, the total pressure in the flask is 1.2 atmospheres. We want to find the value of Kp for this reaction at 690 Kelvin. Okay, so um, out of the, the 10 questions, this one's probably the toughest one. So let me uh, switch over to this Jamboard right here. All right, so um, this, this is the, the same problem. All right, now we have, this is our balanced equation right here. Now it says we have, um, at, the, at the beginning, we just have one atmosphere of the COCl2. And it says it's previously evacuated. That means there's nothing else in there. So that means we're going to start off with uh, zero atmospheres of the, of the products. Okay. So for the change, since we have zeros on the product side, we know it's going to shift to the right. So this is going to be minus x. This is going to be plus x. This is going to be plus x. All right, so once we get to equilibrium, when we put those two together, now this is going to be 1 minus x. And the two products are each just going to be x. Okay, so now we want to figure out the value for kp. Now the other thing that's given is that once we do get to equilibrium, we know we have a total pressure of 1.2 atmospheres. So the next step is to use this Dalton's law of partial pressure to solve for x. And then we can plug that into the Kp expression. So we know the total pressure is going to be 1.2 atmospheres. And we can just use the equilibrium line and just plug in those expressions for each of these. So the pressure of the, the COCl2 is going to be 1 minus x. Uh, CO, that's going to be X, and then CL2 is also going to be X. Okay, now we want to solve for X. Now this combination uh, is just going to cancel out, all right, so that cancels out. So it ends up on the right side of the equation. Now it's just 1 plus X is equal to 1.2. So from that we can get X is equal to 0.2 atmospheres. So those two cancel, you get 1 plus x on the right side after those cancel. Just subtract 1 from each side and you get, you get x is equal to, to 0 0.2. All right, now we can take that information and we can plug it into the Kp expression, which I wrote down here. It's just products over reactants using their partial pressures. So both CO and Cl2 are x, and x is equal to 0.2. So on the top of this Kp expression, it's going to be 0.2 squared. And um, COCl2 is going to be 1 minus x, so that ends up being 0.8. So now when we do uh, 0.2 squared, and we divide that by 0.8, we end up with 0.05. So our answer is going to be b. Okay, so we figured our answer was B right there. Okay, now going to number two. Okay, so here we have this balanced equation. So the reaction mixture represented above is at equilibrium at 298. We have molar concentrations for X, Y, and Z. And we want to find the value of the equilibrium constant, so K, uh, for this reaction at 298. Okay, now let me go to the next slide here. So this is that same problem. I just copied over the important information. This is our balanced equation. So from that, this is going to be our K expression. And we have our concentrations at equilibrium. So we can just plug those in. So 4 cubed, uh, that's going to be 64. Uh, divide that by 2 squared, so that's 4. So 64 divided by 4 is 16. We also divide that by 0.5, so when you divide by 0.5, it's like multiplying by 2. So then 16 times 2, that's going to be 32 for our final answer. 
So now we can go back to our choices here. So that's going to be letter E for question two. All right, number three. All right, so we have this equilibrium concentration for Y and Z. That's these two compounds here. Now, really, we don't have to worry about the initial concentrations. We're really just worried about this equilibrium concentration. Um, so now the question here says, in a second experiment done at the same temperature, um, our concentration of Z at equilibrium is 1. So which of the following is the approximate equilibrium concentration of Y? So if it's going to be done at the same temperature, the, the ratio of Z to Y at equilibrium needs to be constant. So um, in the second reaction, it's 1, so the ratio of 0.8 to 1 is going to be the same as the ratio of 0.1 or 1 1.2 to y in the second equation. So that has to be 1.5 because that ratio needs to remain constant when, when the reaction is done at the same temperature. Okay? So letter B. <clears throat> Question number four. All right, so we have another equation. Uh, we have four moles of X and Y are placed into the one liter vessel and they're allowed to react. We get six moles of Z is produced once we get to equilibrium. So we want to find the value of K, the equilibrium constant again. So going over here, so I can write this out. Okay, so this is that same problem. Here's our equation. We're starting off with four moles in one liter, so it's four molar of, of X and Y. We don't have any Z to begin with. In the change line, we know we're going to shift to the right because we have Z, uh, zero for Z, so it's going to shift towards a zero. It's going to shift towards any missing component. So minus X, minus X, and this is plus 2X uh, because of the coefficient 2. Now, we also know that at equilibrium, we have six moles of Z. Okay, so on the equilibrium line, this is going to be 6. So what we can get from this, from this information, we know that 2x has to be equal to 6. So that means x has to be equal to 3. Now on the equilibrium line here for x and y, it's going to be 4 minus x. So it's going to be 4 minus 3. So once we get to equilibrium, x and y are each going to be 1. Right, so now, so now we want to figure out Kc. We can plug that information in in the equilibrium line. It's just going to be 6 squared divided by 1 squared, which is just 1. So this is 36 divided by 1, so our answer is going to be 36. And we go back to our choices. That's going to be letter E. All right, question 5. All right, now most of the questions are comparing K values. So what it means to have a large K value versus a small K value. So in this case right here, um, in this first reaction, has a K value of 10, which means anything greater than 1, the products tend to be favored. This has an exponent of 10 to the negative 31st, so a very, very small K value. So once you get to equilibrium, the reactants are going to be heavily favored. We will have hardly any of this NO produced. So we want to say, based on the information, which of the following correctly compares the relative concentrations of BRCL and NO present inside the respective containers at equilibrium? So we're going to hardly have any of this NO. So this BRCL, it, you're going to have much more of that once we get to equilibrium. So now we look at our choices, and we have to we have to uh, have the correct explanation along with it too. Um, so we know it's not going to be D. It's not going to be A. They're not going to be equal. Um, it's not about the larger molecules. It's about the larger K value for reaction one. So the answer is C. <clears throat> All right. So we have this reaction, another small K value with an exponent of 10 to the negative 11th. So we, we mix uh, NO3 and a tenfold excess of NO2. So we put those in there. And we place it inside a rigid container at a constant temperature, and we allow it to reach equilibrium. So which of the following pr uh, provides a correct comparison of the equilibrium concentrations of these chemical species and why? OK, the, the idea with a small K value is that the reactants are going to be heavily favored 
once we get to equilibrium. So we're going to have a lot more of this NO3 and N2 compared to the N2O5. So that means we can eliminate uh, letter B. Um, and we can, let's see, because, so we're going to have a lot more NO3 because a small K value indicates that the consumption of reactions is favored. That This part is okay, but this part is wrong. It says the consumption of the reactants is favored. That's not true. Uh, we're hardly going to consume any of the reactants. All right, so we know it's not B because this is backwards. Um, we want to compare the reactants to products. So we got letter D because a small k value indicates that the formation of products is not favored at equilibrium. So it's letter D. So this reactant here, we're going to have much higher concentration than the product. All right, question seven. All right, we have a k value of 240. This is the, the key right here. All right, so the reaction is quite rapid. So K values have nothing to do with the rate of reaction. That's a completely separate topic. So one is not true. Uh, the product is favored over the reactants at equilibrium. That is true. K values larger than one tend to favor the products. And the reaction is endo endothermic. Again, the K value doesn't have anything to do with the, the, the thermodynamics of it. So it's only going to be two. So letter B. Okay, the last couple are about manipulating reactions. Okay, so we want to find the K value for reaction three. All right, so looking to see how we get uh, reaction three from these first two. Um, reaction one needs to be flipped because of CH4. So when you flip the reaction, uh, we take the reciprocal of the K value. So that means uh, it's going to be one over K1. Uh, and we do the same thing with reaction two. We have to flip this because the CO2 is on the opposite side. So it's got to be the reciprocal of K2. And then we're going to put both of these reactions flipped together to get reaction three. When, we, when you put reactions together, you multiply their K values together. So it has to be the reciprocal of one, the reciprocal of two, and then those two multiply together to get K3. So the answer is letter D. Question nine. All right, we have a K value of two times 10 to the fifth for this reaction right here. If we reverse the reaction, you take the reciprocal of this. So it'd be one divided by two times 10 to the fifth. So that's gonna be five times 10 to the negative six, letter B. And the last one, okay, we have this reaction that has a value of 95 for its uh, K, the equilibrium constant. Uh, we want to figure out the equilibrium constant for this reaction right here. Okay, so to go from this reaction to this reaction, we have to flip it because the reactants and products are on opposite sides. And we also have to multiply this top reaction by a factor of two. So when you flip a reaction, you take the reciprocal of the K value. So you know it's one over 95. And when you multiply a reaction by some uh, factor, some integer, to get the new coefficients, we have to raise the value of K to that power. So it's gonna be one over 95 squared. So it's gotta be letter E. All right, and that's all for that, uh, that quiz. All right, have a great day.